Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm here with Avi Singh today. Uh, we're gonna try something a little bit different. We're actually gonna go out and using an OBS encoder um, and you were using Skype in the background. So uh, we'll see how that works. Avi is sitting not too far away, about four offices down in our dev leads office. So if it goes horribly wrong, he can jump in on this call and actually do stuff from here um, using my computer. But this is actually a continuation of uh, a session God, was it before Christmas? Just after Christmas we did that last one. Was that right, Avi? Gosh, it's hard to remember now. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a couple months anyways. Um, and, it, you know, the, the requests were they wanted to see more of Avi. Uh, of course, that's always good good for a, a laugh with that bow tie that you're wearing today and good value which nobody as. can see right <laughs> I, I get yeah. to see it you know and that's, okay, that's all that matters um, but, but Avi for those who want the visual kind of painted in their imagination he's decked out in all yellow and black and he's got this power bi yellow bow tie so um, what are we gonna look at today what, what are you what are you gonna show us um, continuing on from the modeling session that you guys you did a couple months ago yeah, well, if you remember, I started that one off with a dog story. So I'm going to kick it off with another dog story. Now, this one, unfortunately, is a, a bit sad one. But uh, here's what happened the other day. I was just taking a stroll in my neighborhood, neighborhood out for a walk. And I walked by this man and a dog just sitting on a porch. And I just walked by them. But then I noticed that the dog was whimpering. So I walked up to the man and said, you know, did you notice that the, your dog is whimpering? It seems to be in pain. And he said, oh, yeah, I know. He's been sitting on a nail. And I go, whoa, what, what? why doesn't he get off the nail? And he said, ah, it would hurt too much to move. And my friend, isn't that the truth? I mean, change is hard. It hurts to move, right? It hurts to do new things. And probably a lot of you have even discovered that with Power BI. And I know it started off like a beautiful love story. Everything was great. You pulled in some data, put some visuals on there. People loved it, and they wanted more. And you tried to give them more. And maybe that's when you started running into trouble. You started running into these brick walls, and they were so frustrating. And one of the common ones that I see people hit is that they find themselves struggling with some really complex DACs. And like, oh my gosh, I got to solve this. So this is an example from our weekly Q&A call. So I hang out with my students. Uh, we do a live weekly Q&A call. And one of them brought this question in. He said, hey, Avi, I'm looking at these journal entries, and I have this data. And I'm trying to write this new measure. And can you help me fix it? And I look at the measure, and oh my god, there's calculate in there, count rows, there's filter, there's all except, and there's there's a hard-coded date, 2018-11. I'm like, oh my gosh, how am I going to solve this? Now, of course, we solved this, but we didn't solve it in DAX, right? We solved it by fixing the model, and this was the final measure. That's it, right? So guys, so there's there's a hard way. And there's an easy way, and a lot of users who are who are kind of you know self-taught, they they didn't get a chance to focus on the basics, focus on the core fundamentals, which is to focus on the model. Because if you do that one piece right, everything else became easy. Cool. So just a reference to data modeling part one. As Chuck said, we had covered that. So it's on Power BI channel, but probably it's easier to find it if you head to my channel, because it's pinned right up top in the playlist. So just look for uh, kind of this data modeling one. And uh, while you're there, might as well check out, uh, there's a Power BI tutorial. That's a great one if you're just getting started out. Uh, the calendar table, everybody loves that. And uh, of course, all the live sessions that I do on my channel on Talk Power BI. So yeah, just head on to youtube.com slash Power BI Pro. But I'm going to do a really brief recap. So don't, don't go there now. So data modeling, when you start out creating it, don't create it in Power BI. Right? That's not where it starts. It actually starts on a whiteboard or a piece of paper. You're going to draw it out. And you're going to start with your data table which really is a business process. So you're going to figure out which business process do you want to monitor? 
do you want to show reports on? Do you want to try to optimize and scale or something like that, right? Could be sales, could be warehouse shipment, could be anything. So that's your business process, that's your data table. And then are going to come your lookup tables. And these are your who, what, where, when, how. So if we take that simple sales example, it's going to be like who bought it, what did they buy, where did they buy it, when did they buy it, and how can be other stuff like discount supply and stuff. So that would be your data model. Hey, really simple, really easy. But then your job is to bring that model to life in using Power, uh, using Power BI Query Editor. Right? That's your tool. That's your chisel. So you're going to use that. So this one, so again, that was all covered in basics, uh, the part one. You can check that out on my channel. Uh, I'm not going to go further into that because this one is implementing Power BI data modeling. So I just want to show you that how exactly do you bring this to life. So we're going to jump right into demo, if that's okay with you guys. And while I'm bringing that up, uh, shout out to everybody who's joining online. Shout out to Hans, who's joined with a group of 43 in Norway. And of course, everybody else. And, All right, cool. And, and Roberto said to say hello. He actually he was the first shout out and said hello to you. So and nice. Apparently, All right. Cool. Apparently, he's been on many of your sessions for your classes. So terrific. All right. So imagine. So I can't show you a piece of paper. Imagine we had built this on a piece of paper, and we had built lines like this. So again, our data tables. In this case, we have two data tables: the sales and the budget, and then we have the lookup tables: the who, where what and when. And on our paper, we had these two lines drawn. And now our job is to just bring that to life in Power BI in Query Editor. Now, how do we do that, though? Because the budget, if you look at that, is at, you know, it doesn't have a date column that would let me connect it to calendar table. It's at month level. And it doesn't even have a product key. It's just got subcategory. So what that looks like right now, if I'm going to pop over to the report side, is if you look at, I'm going to maximize this, and I'm going to show you the data. So if you look at the data, it's going to have this, what I call the repeating number pattern. right? The same number is being repeated, and that's clearly not good. So that's a symptom of, well, well things are not quite set up yet. So we just need to connect budget to calendar and product, but how do we do that when it's not at that same grain, at that same level. So again, we're going to go to our chisel, our query editor, and, and see how we can do that. So the first approach that I'm going to show you is actually we're going to cheat. All right? And you know, call it cheating, call it shortcut. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to pretend that the data is at a daily level. So I'm just going to go to the month table, uh, oh, sorry, the budget table, and I'm going to take month and say, you know what, uh, let's just make it a date, shall we? Announce a date, picks the first. Uh, you can use the functions in built to change it to the end of the month if you like to. It doesn't really matter because the data really is not at a month level. I'm going to hit close and apply. And now I'm going to be able to connect that to the date column in the calendar table. And usually after I'm done with that, I hide this column in the report view so that I don't use it by mistake. Uh, because I not only have the month, I have a very rich calendar table. It's got the month, year, quarter, and you know anything else that I might need. And now if I go back to my report, uh, ah well, so this one is still broken, the product one we haven't fixed, but this one, sales and budget are working now. So they, it's showing you. Uh, budget by month. So we have connected that. That's great. But how do we do this for the other entity, for uh, pro, uh, the, for the subcategory? Because if we go over there, I mean budget, we pretended that the month is at a daily level, but how do we pretend that this is at a product level? So that's going to take some little bit of work, and essentially we're going to pick a kind of a random product key and just stick it in there. So. Uh, let's go over to a product table, and I'm going to say reference, and I'm going to create essentially a sub category level table. And what I'm going to do is transform group by, and I'm going to say group by subcategory, and just give me, you know, I, I just want to pick one product key. Doesn't matter which. You can use min, you can use max, doesn't matter. 
cool so I got that product key and now I can go back to budget and now merge this with that other table so I'm going to say merge with this product subcategory and just match my subcategory with this actually I realize that if your subcategory isn't unique if maybe two categories can have the same category uh, subcategory then you would want to build this table on category subcategory and just do use both columns to merge uh, okay cool so we did this two, two, two. hit OK and I'm going to grab that product key. And again, you can think of it as a random product key. I mean, it's deterministic. It's, it's choosing max. But, you know, we just wanted one product key. And now we're good to go. But before we even load this, this is my favorite part in the query editor, that you can use something and just throw it away. And I call this cooking in the kitchen. So cooking is cleaning, shaping, transforming your data. And the best place to do that is in your kitchen, which is the query editor, because you can, you know, kind of peel off your potatoes and throw away, throw away the peels. So I'm going to uncheck disable, uh, enable load here, because this is the peels. You know, I used it and I'm done with it. I don't need it back in my model. Uh, and in fact, in budget, if I wanted, I could also get rid of category, subcategory. But I'm going to leave it there for effect, my friends. So now let's bring it back. Uh, okay, hey, some folks are saying screen is frozen. I don't know. Um, it's actually a little bit late. I, it seems to be... Continue going. I, 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 okay. I think we're okay. Okay, cool. All right, so we're back here, and now we have the product key, which we can connect to. Oh, well, hang on, hang on. Actually, I think, table. no, no, what are, what are you looking at? <laughs> um, I, I think they're right. So I'm actually seeing merge, select a table, matching columns, and budget. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at the relationship view. No, we're not in the relationship. We're in, we're in the, the merge view. So... Why don't you stop sharing in Skype and reshare? The Skype session is, is locked is what's happening. Okay. All right. Let's do that. No. Uh, what's happened is, is Skype has gone away. Okay. Let me know if you... Uh, okay. Let's see if this works. I think it's actually the connection with Skype. Um, yeah, I did reshare. Yeah, yeah. But Should I stop? Actually, let me see. Let me stop and restart. Again, I don't think the problem is on your side. I think. Okay, I'm resharing now. Of course, there is a bit of a lag on there. Okay, so Samuel is saying we're good now. All right. Okay. Well, thank you guys for giving us a heads up. Okay. No, I, I think Samuel may be wrong because. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hit the keys harder, Jack. Okay. Uh, um, why can't I? All right, guys. Hey, we really appreciate patience. Let's see if we can figure this out really quick. Oh, actually, um, your mouse is just moving. So, are we, oh, are okay. we, are we in the merge view or what, what view? What are relationship you? view? That's where I am. Oh, gosh, yeah. So, something, yeah, I can, I'm seeing the live feed now. No, I'm, I'm at the relationship view. I'm not sure why it's frozen. Okay. Um, and Skype, Skype is no longer being responsive. So I, I think what I'm going to do is rejoin the Skype session on my side, which is clear. Okay. All right. No worries. I'll uh, look at some of the chat. Uh, let's see. So, guys, yeah, we'll figure it out. But yeah, hey, so if you. While I'm restarting, because I don't know that we're going to lose audio, why don't you actually ask Avi some questions in the chat window and you can actually yeah. answer those as I restart it? So, so Rob Singh asks, when you're modeling data in Power BI, are you playing with the copy of the data or the actual data? In other words, can you damage your actual data in Power BI? That's hard to do. So you are playing with a copy of data. So technically speaking, there are two ways. Usually you have two options. One, you import data or connect to it live. I'll say for me, the default, again, the default, like 95, 99% of the time, I import data. 
because that gives me the full playground. I have the complete query editor experience, complete DAC experience. So that's what I do. There are some cases, exceptions, where I connect live with the data. Now, you can't harm the data in the sense that you can't really change it. You can't mess it. It's a read-only connection. But you can harm the data source in the sense that you can overload it. Uh, now, if you're importing data, then if you set up 15-minute refreshes and it's 100 million rows, you can hurt it that way. But uh, uh, live connection, of course, is a little more uh, chatty. Uh, so, but otherwise, you're pretty safe. Uh, frankly, for if, usually, I'm not worried about impacting data in any way. Uh, so yeah, so hopefully that helps. Uh, let's see if you had any other questions. Uh, yeah, feel free to ask. Do do do. Okay, cool. I was just wondering if you guys do experience what I was talking about, where where y you start off with Power BI and then suddenly it feels like you are hitting these walls. You are, uh, you know, like struggling with a complex DAX issue or something like that. So, uh, so by the way, yeah, uh, me and Matt Allington, uh, another Power BI MVP, you probably all know him. Uh, we are going to be presenting a pre-con session on this topic, modeling in Power BI, at the at the Power BI Summit. I almost said, well, yeah, that's what I call it, the Power BI Summit. Uh, I think the official name is Business Application Summit. Uh, and, and, yeah, so when we were talking about this, we both related stories of how we see our students where they, um, uh, you know, they, they kind of go through this experience where they start hitting these walls. Hey, Chuck, you're back. Ooh, I think we're on. Yay! Ha-ha! <laughs> okay, let's, uh... What'd you do? Yep, Roberto said it best. <laughs> Stuff happens. Okay, cool. And so, as a, a test using Skype through OBS, I'm going to go out and say it's a suboptimal experience. But back to you, Avi, Fair now that say. we're live again. Fair to say, yeah, yeah. All right, guys. Uh, so I'll recap just a little bit, and I'll go quick so that we don't cover the same ground. But essentially what I ended up doing was that I built on the product table, I referenced and built this product subcategory where I picked for each subcategory, you know, some kind of a product key. And said so helmets, you know, just some random product key. And then brought it back to the budget table. So now we can pretend that the budget table is also at a product key level. So again, this is a little bit of cheating, but uh, uh, we'll see how it works. So now I was able to connect it with the product table, and now if I go back, you notice this doesn't have that repeating pattern anymore. This this uh, works. I mean, this is showing me product uh, budget information by product category. So this is good, but this does have its limitations. And let me kind of bring up the end file for this is that we're only pretending that the budget is at a date level, is at a product level. It, it isn't really. So if somebody, I don't know, unintentionally or something, they end up drilling down to that level, then it's, it's, they're going to see cracks in our armor. They're not going to see uh, uh, you know, good stuff. So if we go budget by date, this is how it's going to look like. So if somebody is looking at by month, you know, it all looks good. Sales, budget, and of course, you can calculate variance and whatever you want, and it all is going to look great. But as soon as somebody drills down to a date level, 
it looks a little odd because you see sales for the da daily level because sales is recorded at a daily level but the budget is is uh, you know is, is all allocated just as one date now usually people kind of are okay with it and sometimes you you can allocate it to the last day of the month that's pretty easy to do but usually people are okay with this but they're not okay with this behavior where if you drill down into your product and you go categories accessories subcategories tires and tubes and everything is great but you drill down further into products and it says oh batch kit eight batches a specific product it has all the budget so that looks weird so let's see how else we can solve this and I'm going to show you two different approaches in fact so let's do our uh, second approach in this case we're not going to pretend that the budget is at a product key level we're going to actually create a, what's called a cascading table uh, at the product subcategory level it's actually easier to show it than uh, talk about it so again we're back at the same data set, set and our, okay, we're going to do our cooking in the kitchen that's where we work with our data so see, oh, oops this is the end file uh, let me open the begin file <laughs> okay Joey says, we never have any issues with Skype for Business either. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I, I, you know, that's better than yeah. the one where the, you know, the, the nun, the rabbi, and the preacher walk into the bar. I, I like that. That's good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, so we're back here. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to right-click and reference again. And we are going to create a subcategory table. But this time we are going to load it in our model. Last time, remember, it was a throwaway. All we did was grab some of these fictitious keys and stuck them back in the budget table. So this one is going to be our, at the subcategory level. So for this one, you can choose uh, that lowest level, subcategory, and anything higher. So uh, if there was like subcategory, category, and super category, I could have chosen all three. I just have two. So I'm going to say remove other columns. And uh, and I'm trying to make this a lookup table. So lookup table needs two things for it to work. First of all, you need to remove duplicates. So subcategory, I don't want any duplicates. That's gone. Now, it still has that null value, but you can just go back and say remove uh, blank rows. And there's a gone too. So now this is good to be serve as a lookup table. And I'm going to go back, hit and close and apply. And I'll show you how it looks like in the relationship model. So again, this is our second kind of approach at it. So let me just remove the model. And we talked about this in the first session that I did uh, on data modeling, where I'm very particular about positioning these because it speaks volumes to me. Uh, actually, I'm going to swap calendar and product here. So data tables at the bottom, lookup tables at the top. So what we have here is now we have this product subcategory level. It's got the category, subcategory. And Power BI was able to connect them exactly how, uh, uh, how I would have done. So now subcategory links to this table. And sales table uh, was already connected to product, but now product is connected to this one. So let's see how this works for our reporting. So now if I go back to the report, Notice we're trying to fix sales and budget by category. So if you look at this, it's still broken. If you look at the data, it still has that repeating number pattern. It's so it's showing the same budget, the same length graphs. So it's not working because we are not using the right category and subcategory. What we need to do is swap these out. So I'm going to take these out and bring these ones in. And let's see how it looks. And now you can see now it's not. Uh, showing that uh, weird pattern uh, anymore. And if I look at show data, I can see that, yep, sales and budget are kind of nicely side by side. So this is working. Now, of course, this is um, a little clumsy because you have these category and subcategory in two different tables. Now, if you want to avoid that, you can hide category and subcategory in, in this view just to make sure that every time these ones are used. But even otherwise, I find this approach a little clunky. I mean, subcategory and category are really product attributes. Why are they hanging off in a separate table on the side? So I want, I want to show you my third approach, which I find the most elegant. But before we uh, go there, what about our calendar table? I mean, here, do we also create a, a calendar month level and uh, connect it that way? 
so it's kind of hard to see. Uh, actually, I never do that. So for calendar, as I said, usually people are okay with you know just pretending that it's at a date level. So usually for calendar, I never do that. For per product, this is a fair approach, but I want to show you the third one, which is actually my favorite. Uh, so let's go there. RRR, I think, uh, if I remember right, your name is Ashok. All right, folks, so now we're on to our third one. And there's, there's an active discussion about live versus import, it seems. All right, so I'm just going to go a little bit slower here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create that subcategory level again. So I'm going to I'm going to reference this and product sub category. Fair enough, right? And I'm going to keep sub category and anything higher, which in this case is just category. If we had a super category, I would keep that too. And again, the same steps as I had done, remove duplicates, remove uh, blanks. But instead of loading this in, I want to mash it together with the product table. And for that, I also need a product key here. And the best way to add that is if you go into Add Column and add an Index Column. And first of all, I'm going to change the name here. I'm going to, instead of Index, I'm going to call it the Product Key. And by the way, my first recommendation to my students is to turn on the formula bar, because that just gets you a little bit comfortable with M to the point where you can feel comfortable uh, doing stuff like this. Just come in here and say, you know what? I don't want to call it index. I'm going to call it product key. Great. Got that. But if you look at our product table, the product key, it runs from 1 to, well, we have about 606 rows, so 606. And we don't want to o overlap those keys. So we want these ones to be kind of totally unique. So I'm going to start this at a really high number. Let's start 10,000, so there's no risk of overlap, even in like 20 years of time. So now I have these two tables, and I want to kind of, you know, stack them together, one on top of the other, right? So, uh, and for that, we're going to use append. So a good way to, if you get confused between merge and append, uh, mer what merge does is it adds columns on the side of the table. Oops. Uh, there we go, right? So that's what merge does. And what append does is it lets you stack tables. So you can take one table and and uh, stack it on top of the other. And that's what we want. We want to stack uh, this product subcategory and the product table. So I'm going to choose uh, product subcategory, append, but I'm going to append it to a new table, append queries as new. Okay, so product subcategory, and then I'm going to stack these two on top of each other. Hit OK. And the original one, I'm going to rename it to product ridge. And this is product subcategory. The new table, I'm going to call it product. So this becomes our new product table. So notice what's happening here. So if you look at this table, it has got the subcategory category and the product key, 10,000. But if you keep scrolling down, this is the regular product table. And unfortunately for AdventureWorks, it looks a little weird because uh, the, the first few products don't have subcategory category. But if you scroll down enough, uh, OK, a little more. You can see that. So this is coming from a regular table, which has the product, subcategory, category, everything filled out. Now, if you scroll all the way back up, the ones at the top, notice that all of these attributes are null, which actually makes sense. Because what this row represents is data coming in at the subcategory level. So what we have here is what I call a multi-grain lookup table. So in, in, in a sense, this table at the same time Right? It, 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 it's at a subcategory level, and it's also at a product key level. So we're almost good with this. The only thing we need is we need the budget to have these new fictitious product keys that we created subcategory. So let's, let's go back to budget and, and uh, add that there. So for this, we're going to merge query. Again, you use merge if you want to kind of add a column to the side. You use append if you want to stack uh, on top of each other. So we want to add a column here. So I'm going to use merge queries and go over to my product subcategory. And uh, yeah, so this is what I was talking about. If your subcategories are not unique, you might want to merge based on, and you hold down the control key for this. You hold down control, and you can 
uh, click category and then click subcategory. Notice there's a small one and two here. And then I'm going to do the same here, category and subcategory. So same one and two here. Number one is category. And this looks good. I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm expand it. Now, when you do merge like this, one thing that I uh, usually watch out for is the count at the bottom. So right now it says 204. And at least in this operation, I don't expect it to increase because all I'm doing is adding a value. Sometimes when you get things wrong, you're going to see the count blow up when you expand it. it when you when you do this, it's going to go to like 10,000 or something. And they're like, oh, oops, you know. So so I can see it didn't happen for me. So that that means things are good. So now we're ready to go. We got the budget table, which has this fictitious product key, and a product table is at both the grains. It has a subcategory as well as a product key level. I'm going to hit close and apply. All right, cool. And now if you get back here, oops, I don't know what it did. Product, oh, product, oh shoot, I, I shouldn't have loaded the product subcategory. Let's, uh, let me go back and fix that. So I don't need this anymore. In fact, the product orig, I don't need that anymore. And I love this part about the query editor. You can use elements as you see fit, and you can use it in building blocks. And while I'm here, I'll show you also the query dependencies view, which I love where you can see exactly how I'm building. So you can see how budget table, I'm sourcing it from here, but also taking a little different product subcategory and so forth. Okay, now let's go back and it should look cleaner now. All right, and so product key, I can act, so sorry about that. So make this relationship active. And now we can also connect this one to product key and now if we go back here um, oh, okay got it so it, it's I changed the tables on it so it's complaining about that but if I bring in category and subcategory you can see that it works but let me bring up kind of the final file and let me show you why I think that this is a lot more elegant approach now, if you remember, the problems that we had in the first approach was that whenever you drill down to uh, to a lower level, it it it, it you know it, it uh, showed the budget allocated to a weird product key. That was a, uh, a, pr a problem in the first approach. In the second approach, the problem was we had kind of product data split across two different tables. So in this way, you get the best of both worlds. So if you look at this, if somebody is looking at budget at a category, uh, a category subcategory level, and if they drill down to a specific product, uh, okay, that was a, not a good example. Uh, let's try. Ah, like accessories is a good one. So if you see this one, as long as they're looking here, but when they go down to tires and tubes, it doesn't randomly allocate. It actually shows up as as blank, which makes sense. I think that's the best representation you can show when somebody drills down at the product level that, hey, it's not available. Budget is not available. Now, you can get fancy here, and instead of blanks, you can put uh, a text like NA or not applicable or whatever you want. Uh, but you know, I think this is this is uh, better than our first approach, where we, it was ending up in a random one. And uh, this approach is also better because we don't have that uh, that cascading the product subcategory just hanging off on the side. So guys, that's all I have for the demo today. So again. Uh, you can go to my channel and watch the part one of this if you want a little more uh, that was uh, kind of a theoretical grounding into the approach and modeling and as I mentioned we are me and Matt Allington is going to be going in a lot more detail on this and there's going to be a day-long pre-conference session that's on July 22nd so if you register for the summit do join us there and of course you can find more about me on learnparbi.com as well all right cool so hey uh, if you have any questions, let's see, RRR is asking, how about using cross-join rather than activate many-to-many -many relationships? 
Mm, well, gosh, uh, I will give you the lawyer answer. It depends. Many to many is solved pretty elegantly in in Power BI. I I have typically only used just just yeah like a many to many pattern where you use a bridge table to connect the two. Uh, so, so Nate and actually I think it was Madeline was asking uh, if you're going to post this sample. I indicated that you were going to post it on your blog. Is what's the best URL? What's the best place for them to actually get the the samples that you're applying with? Uh, yeah, actually I'm not sure these samples are up there or not, but a lot of my downloads you can find it on uh, just learnfarbi.com/download. Perfect. Thank you very much. Yeah, that has all the files that I have made available. Um, okay, let's see. So yeah, folks, go ahead and ask any questions if you have. How much money does DAX bring to a person? Hmm. <laughs> that is definitely a lawyer. It depends, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, so I'll say, uh, yeah, the tool is only as good as the person wielding it. So you can do magic with it or you can hit a brick wall. Can you implement the same approach in SSA Stabler? That's a good question. So really, I think of the technology Power BI, and I see it exist. You know, it's inside Excel, and there you see it in terms of the add-ins, the data model, the query editor. It's in PowerBI.com, Power BI Desktop, and it's also in SSA Stabler. It's the same technology. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, gosh. So yeah, so SSA Stabler. So Chuck, I've heard about this. To bring query editor into SSIS, I think that's, and I don't think that's that's there yet. Do you know any more on that? Um, is you mean actually bringing uh, the query editor and the relationship you back into PowerBI.com? Is that what we're talking about? No, so if somebody is playing at the bigger stage, they're using SSAS tabular, yeah. often uh, they don't have query editor. I mean, they have the, like, the data model. They can define all the DAX they want, but they can't you know, kind of clean shape transform data, right? That tool isn't available to them. Yeah, I believe so. So I think uh, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be an answer on that. Um, one, thing, one thing that was asked earlier on, um, and, and there was several threads on it, but it's several pages up. Can you actually do a quick uh, job since we've got some time? Go out and compare and contrast uh, live connection, direct query versus import. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So let me open uh, a new connection here. So when you connect and get data, and when you connect to specific sources, typically um, uh, analysis services or SQL Server, both of them would offer you an option to connect live or import the data. Let's try a SQL Server first. So if you go to a SQL Server, and I just have a local one running, hopefully it's still on, and again, you have the import option, and the live option we've been talking about is uh, labeled direct query. Now, as I said, the default option is import, and I hit OK, and I have the same query editor functionality where I can kind of uh, select tables and, and uh, go from there. Uh, let's actually see if we can try it out. All right, so use my kind of credentials connect. And by the way, if, if people aren't familiar with that dot nomenclature, what Avi is doing is yeah. referencing his own computer. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so you can pick and choose, and you can click edit, and that's going to launch the query editor, and it's a standard interface. And I, I love that, so I call the query editor it, that it democratizes data. So it doesn't matter if you're connecting to a SQL Server, importing data from here, or importing data from a CSV, you have the same capability available. You can merge, append, clean rows, whatever you want, doesn't matter what the data set. So that is pretty amazing. And then once you bring it into your model, it's going to essentially make a copy and live inside the PBIX file, but you would have complete access to all uh, you know, relationships, DAX, everything. On the other hand, if you do a live connection, uh, direct query, uh, it's, it's not going to make a copy of the data. It's going to run uh, a query. Whatever visualization you build or, or something, it's going gonna, it's gonna to run a query against the server. Now, of course, so this is the exception 
I very rarely use this and the typical scenarios would be that maybe the data set is really really large so you don't want to make a copy of that or you do want that live element you don't want to even wait for like a 15 minute and an hourly refresh you're like no I don't I want live if it changed last minute I want to see it so that's when you would use a live connection uh, for a second let's talk about so, uh, analysis services so this is when you're connecting to the so f when you're connecting to the SQL server the default for me is to import the data and then combine it freely with other sources and stuff but when you're connecting to analysis services here my default is usually to connect live because analysis services is is already a model it, it's ready it's got measures defined relationships and everything why would you want to recreate that so here the default is you connect to it and now notice that the uh, those other two kind of tabs go away you simply have a visualization layer which lets you visualize your data and again as I was saying if you if you're connected live to it you can see that it already has the measures and everything else so now you're free to use uh, it and build your visuals as you want Chronic category list on that right so uh, so this becomes kind of a visualization layer there are so in this case there are cases exceptions where you actually import data from an analysis server or an uh, SSA established server so again those are exceptions uh, one example that I would list is imagine if your BI team had a model and it was up and running but you wanted to do uh, combine it with a different data set or, or do something really radical on your own then you would have to import that data in there one thing that I do want to point out is that even when you're connected live to an SSA established server there's some new functionality well not new anymore but I think it's well I think it's still new and exciting so right now I'm connected to that analysis server right uh, if you go home I'm uh, going to say edit queries. Yeah, I'm connected live to that server, but it does allow me to define my measures, define new DAX. So let's say if we had, uh, uh, what, what measures do we have? We have customer count here, and we have sales amount. Let's say I wanted to define a measure, which gives me a, a count of the products sold. I can define it in my model, products sold, and that can be distinct count uh, product key in my sales table so that way even though you're connecting to a kind of an official model uh, built by possibly some other team possibly your BI team you can still uh, augment it at least somewhat so product sold this is my new measure cool all right let's see uh, do, do, do let's see what else people are asking Nate is asking, would you do something similar if, for example, actuals were at a day level and budget was at a month level? Or would you just connect both facts to the date table? Mm. Oh, yeah. So for the calendar one, I, I always cheat. You know, So for the calendar one, I just pretend that it's at the date, date level. Uh, yeah, that, that works OK. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do the fancy approach that I showed with product. Rob is asking, is it right to think of Power BI as bringing together the power of Excel and Access in one application and then some? Oh my gosh. So, um, I, I don't know. So, Excel is kind of hard because Excel, especially if you look at modern Excel, and gosh, if you look at the recent announcement that just came where uh, it's going to have the Power BI custom visuals, the modern Excel has, uh, you know, almost the same capabilities as you would say Power BI or sometimes I say there's Power BI inside Excel there's a query editor there's the data model and now there are visuals as well so Excel and Power BI I don't see them as a choice or versus I just say whichever tool you're more comfortable with if you're happy in Excel no reason to move off because you got everything right there in Excel if uh, you do like Power BI desktop go at it go nuts at it right and you talk about access but in general uh, whenever you compare the new world with the old world you can say that oh it's like Excel and access but you have to add these four mandatory words so you have to say oh yeah this new world is like the old Excel and access but way more awesome okay so yeah just make sure you add those words Oracle space do we have a connector my work requires that I badly need it so usually uh, let's go to the other model if so Power BI has the most number of connectors 
of all the tools out there. And, and they keep adding it at a crazy rate. So Oracle, uh, well, this does say database. I'm not sure ESS base. Maybe it can connect, maybe it cannot. Um, yeah, so ESS base, I'm not sure about that. I mean, in a pinch, of course, if it can't connect to it, maybe, an, uh, gosh, I mean, sometimes, I'm not sure about Oracle ESS base, but usually when I, I can't connect to the data uh, uh, data source, it's not listed in here, I look for either a generic ODBC driver or uh, sometimes you can get like a feed from there, a JSON, Excel, something like that, a feed on there. Or last case scenario, I export the data and then I import in Power BI. Uh, so Justin has a good point. So he's saying one thing I don't like about the way the query does its operation is that it, it executes parts of it multiple times. So yeah, that part is a little tricky. So sometimes when you are referencing things like this, where it's kind of, uh, you know, this is using that, and, and it might go back to your source, and it's possible that it, um, you know, and even though this one is disabled, Mm, it might still run this so that it can feed the budget table. So it might run these queries multiple times. And of course, the way, the only way to be sure is to monitor your SQL Server using a SQL Server profiler or something and see which queries are passing through. Now, I will say that the query editor is really, really smart in, in that it does uh, do things like query folding. So it tries to optimize the queries it runs, but yeah, it's, it's not always optimal. Mm, yeah, gosh. Uh, I'm thinking if I have any kind of tips for you. Uh, usually, sometimes you can structure the query differently to kind of optimize that and avoid that. Mm, yeah, All, although when you're talking about big data set, another feature which I think has been requested, which is available on the SSES tabular side, but it's still requested is in the ideas.powerbi.com uh, is to maybe have incremental refresh here. So again, uh, SSES tabular has that, and that also helps with uh, large data sets, so having ability to do incremental refresh. Avi, you must have missed yesterday's blog post. Whoa, you kidding me? No. It's on? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's like Christmas every month, my friends, isn't it? Yeah, so if you actually go into File, Options, Preview Features, if you've got this month's build, uh huh, uh, you're actually going to see it in your Power BI desktop. Oh, my God, incremented refresh. <laughs> and, okay. and, and I know we're not talking about yeah. unreleased features, but Justin's got one that he's – he, he's gonna be very happy about. He was actually talking about how they actually control the models that their users use. Um, uh -huh. And the challenge, of course, with that is it's an all for one deal because there's n no notion yet of composite where I get to go out and use your model and I get to uh -huh. go out and, and add my yeah. pieces. So again, yes. we're not announcing anything, Justin, but we hear the pain. <laughs> And Christmas is coming for you, my friend. Oh, lovely. Yeah, that is awesome. All right, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna let's see what else you guys are asking about. Mm. So Pradeep is asking, how can we connect live to other data sources other than direct query? Oh, like stock market or something else? Uh, yeah, you can certainly connect to web sources, XML feeds, a whole bunch of stuff. So it depends on how that service makes itself available, right? So uh, you can try kind of the web connection, and it can connect to a lot of stuff. Um, otherwise, maybe it's an XML or an OData feed or something like that. Mm. Okay, got it. This is more anyway. How to ask? Uh, Rob is asking how to access Power BI so to learn from it longer than a trial period. So Power BI Desktop is 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 free. You, there is no trial period. There's nothing. Uh, the only Part where you have a trial period is barbi.com. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll say there's a lot of stuff you can learn. In fact, I'll say 90% of my work is in Power BI Desktop. So uh, if you are focused on kind of building the model, and I would say that's the heart of Power BI, if you build the model right, the visualization creating these is like walking with your shopping cart in a grocery store, which is, oh, I want this, I want that, and just, you know, click, click, click. Uh, so there's a lot of capability here. So if you're learning, I think there's you got you got a lot of runway there. 
time intelligence formulas. Oh, optimize time intelligence formulas using DAX Studio. That sounds pretty advanced, although a fun topic. Custom measures against live SSAS feature. Uh, yeah, so, oh, yeah, so Justin, that's what uh, I'm, I'm a little, I'm still trying to catch up. That's what Chuck was responding about. Uh, Pradeep is actually asking how can you get in the Office 365 adoption data. There is a connector for it, um, but what I found that actually works much, much better for me is actually going out and importing the audit logs directly. I've, I've got a blog post on it, but the amount of wealth that are in your audit logs is far, far more than just the adoption data. I can go out and see when are people using it and how often and what stuff is actually getting um, abused or misused. If you've got any sort of data loss, it will tell you right away who's going to be the culprit. Um, so for deep, yeah, the, there is a connector that will show you adoption data. But my suggestion is if you have access to the audit log, use that. Awesome. So Uncle Jay asking how to integrate two or more different data sources. Well, that's uh, that's in in built. In fact, well, yeah, you, you said it right when you said two or more. I mean, if you wanted to, you can connect to each one of these and bring them all in. You can be connected in a single model to an Excel file, to a CSV file, XML, JSON, SQL Server database. And as I was saying earlier, the query editor is it democratizes data. So once you're in, once you get past the first few steps, you're like, oh, okay, you know, I'm, this is SQL Server, so maybe it's going to ask my credentials. This is Excel file, so maybe it's going to ask for a path. But after that, no matter what your source, they all look the same. You have the same capability. And once you hit close and apply, uh, they're all, whatever the final shape you got with the query editor, is all going to be loaded in here. And as far as the model is concerned at this point, it doesn't care where it came from. It's, it's you know, they're all kind of equal citizens at this point. So you can absolutely uh, combine multiple data sets. OK, cool. All right, so I know Pradeep's asking about some Office 365 stuff. All right, guys, I'm not seeing any new questions. If I did miss something, I'll pause for a few seconds and so you can type it in again. But otherwise, yeah, hopefully I'll see a lot of you at the Business Application Summit coming up in July. The last two were sold out. I've, I've been told by Microsoft that this time, you know, it shouldn't sell out. But hey, I wouldn't wait. I'll say, you know, register now. And yeah, we're going to have a day long pre con session, me and Matt Allington going. And, all day and on that, and that session's already already listed so it's something you can already sign up for um it's actually one of the few, awesome. few that was actually listed ahead of time so um i see that harm the data science is asking is incremental refresh going to get pushed down to power bi report server i don't know i have to ask chris finland so chris finland would be the guy to ask um if you go out and you put it in the forums we should be able to run that down as well but let me see if i can get it on the next um one of our webinars and make sure that we mention that otherwise Avi, my friend, um, one of the things that was asked right off the bat is, could you go out and give us a webinar on uh, Power BI for financial systems or financial um, analysts? Um, you did that for me a year ago, and that was on a different platform. So if we could get you to maybe redo that one for me. Oh, gosh, that was on my mind as well. Absolutely, I would love to be back. Okay, so uh, everybody, you heard it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get Avi back. And for people who are... Uh, watching the recording are going to go back and review it. We're going to chop out that piece that was missing due to Skype. So that will be gone. All right. Avi, right. thank you very much. And why don't you go ahead and close off. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much.